Hey everybody, what up? Um, so it is a Friday night and I'm bored and I feel like making a video. So that's what I'm doing. Um, I feel like in the tech market, all I hear about is uh, chat GPT and layoffs. And for any of the viewers out there, hopefully nobody's been, been affected by the layoffs. I know that um, that is a big concern. And as far as my prediction on where we are with that, we're probably going to see some more going into this uh, probably throughout the rest of the year, I would imagine. Um, the frustrating thing, I think, is a lot of these companies are actually laying off. I feel like as they're like following suit with what other companies are doing. So, um, you know, Amazon pulls back because Apple pulled back and because Google pulled back. And, and then all the companies that want to be Google are like, well, if Google's pulling back, then we need to pull back. And uh, so a lot of that cost cutting, though, does need to happen because obviously uh, the, the times are tough. You know, the, the market capitalization for a lot of these companies are down and, uh, and that doesn't really equate to profits and, and all that I know. But point being is that the layoffs suck and hopefully you guys aren't affected by that. I'm thankful that I have not been. Um, <clears throat> with uh, chat GPT, in the tech scene, uh, one thing that is clear, like I, I played around with it a little bit a few months ago, and I, you know, if I, I made a video on it. I ended up taking it down. I just uh, I felt like I didn't uh, like the video I did. I needed to make it a little better. Uh, but anyway, I um, I played around with it a little bit, and I'm not yet using it. I do think that we're gonna have a place for it. But one thing that is apparent to me is that in 15 plus years now of doing this there's always been some sort of hype train and uh, chat GPT is just the latest hype train. So I'm now seeing like products and websites and plugins for editors and, you know, APIs to tap into chat GPT or to do this or to do that or to detect chat GPT. Like, um, you know, so many of these like fly by night products spring up from, I feel like tech hype. And it's just something that is, constantly going to happen so there's like a lot of people out there that will say okay it'll take our jobs and all that and maybe it will one day my, my thoughts are the same as they, they've been really for the last several years and that is that you know as we get these AI tools they allow us to be better developers and you know get github copilot is a useful tool and chat GPT could be a useful tool but if you don't understand the code that it's writing then I still think you're going to lack, but you know, you're going to be, you know, far behind an actual software engineer that understands how to use that code more effectively than a non-coder. Um, my thoughts again are the same in that, you know, programming, the best way to learn is to build projects and you don't even have to complete them. If I look back on my career, a lot of my learning was through projects that I created on my own. And most of those projects were like, you know, financial failures for sure. Um, and then a lot of them I just sort of lost interest after, um, you know, a couple of them I, I worked on for multiple years, but I ended up, um, you know, losing interest. But I gained a ton of knowledge along the way. And um, I think more than ever, when people talk about like, you know, design patterns and you know, learn logic, you know, learn the, the lower levels of, you know, internals of, of computer programming, you know, the basic stuff like, uh, you know, conditionals and if else, and just, you know, uh, factory patterns and object oriented programming and functional programming and all that. I, I think the best way to learn is, 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 you know, it's to build projects, it's to make errors. Like if you're not breaking things, you're not learning. And um, typically for me anyway, I, uh, I learn the most by running into problems that I don't know how to solve, you know, and it takes um, a lot of research. And even to this day, uh, that is my job. Sorry, I had to uh, cough. So I paused so you guys couldn't see me coughing. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, honestly, I got I got no complaints of, of where we are uh, in tech and programming. I feel like for me personally, I, you know, I step back from YouTube uh, quite a bit and um, 
I'm like more in tune with my programming than I think I've been in um, many years, actually. I don't even remember. Uh, but there was a time, <clears throat> and really for like a decade plus, where like I just eat, breathe, and sleep code. And uh, I would always be working on some sort of side project. And I learned a ton. And I think, you know, when I look at all that, and I add it all up. I mean, what I've really learned is like, <clears throat> you know, I, I could do those things to unhealthy levels at times. And life is so much better for me if, if to just have a comfortable nine to five, not even worry about, you know, YouTube. And unless I'm bored, like on a Friday night, like tonight. Uh, and that's not to like abandon YouTube or even to downplay or anything like that. I've, uh, this has been a hell of a project, you know. I mean, I've, I've worked on YouTube now for almost uh, 10 years. Actually, it's 10 years now. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, always, I've had fun doing it, but uh, I have no complaints right now as far as uh, where things are and, uh, you know, where I think things are headed. Hopefully in 2024, we bounce out of this. And I think tech always is resilient. Companies always need tech and they always want the latest tech. And yeah, there's a downturn right now. It's probably the worst since 2001. During the 2008 crisis, I mean, that was uh, that effect, you know, that was definitely worse, I think, economically, but uh, tech was sort of unscathed during all of that. You know, we had the smartphone revolution that was going on at that point. <clears throat> and, uh, re you know, that, and that also brought in the whole responsive web design and your, your, your website had to work on tablets and mobile devices. And, you know, we're, I think, still waiting on the next revolution of things. And I don't think chat GPT is, is it. Uh, I do think it's going to be a helpful tool. I don't think it's something like the smartphone, not yet. Um, <clears throat> I don't really know what that next thing is going to be. I mean, I don't know that I have um, the desire to try to jump on the next thing unless it's like to work day to day. You know, it's like a nine to five type of thing. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm curious like what the next thing is myself. I mean, if I had to guess... Uh, <clears throat> I really don't know. I mean, we, we we tried to go like augmented reality, virtual reality. I mean, virtual reality is still a very niche market. I think Meta is, is, a, is a disaster for Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook. Um, you know, like even companies like Zoom, you know, like uh, us doing a lot of things virtually, those products sort of uh, cropped up. I mean, there was a market there, but not like a groundbreaking, game-changing market like the advent of the internet or the smartphone or something like that. Um, we've tried to have things like Google Glass, and that didn't really take off or go anywhere. We have um, wearables and Internet of Things, and a lot of people will still say that there's like a huge market in that. And, um, and you know, I suppose that there still is, but for me, it almost feels like tech has slowed down a little bit. Like we're kind of just waiting for the next big thing. And, um, and anything that comes along, we try to hype it up to the extreme, like cryptocurrency, and then NFTs. And there's not really a viable use case for any of those things yet. Even the, as much hype and all that that, that that has surrounded that, there's been really, in my opinion, no adoption among the mainstream when it comes to like day-to-day -day products that, that at least I, that I use. So, um, yeah, I mean, so the bottom line though is that programming is still a strong industry. I mean, what, what other industry can you really, I mean, find a job in almost any different industry, right? So if you wanted to work for like SpaceX or get into a financial company or insurance or medical agriculture, like, I mean, as a programmer, you can tap into all of those fields, archeology, span zoologists, like the veterinarians. I mean, um, <clears throat> the, the, you know, the, there are so many different industries to tap into, which is why I think software engineering is such a great profession. And then and in addition to that, I mean, we're obviously like highly paid. We get to work from home. We get good benefits. We don't have to break our back or breathe asbestos um, or anything like that. And, um, and if you have the desire, you can learn something new or even create a start, you know, a side project in just a little bit of your spare time. Uh, we've seen it over and over again in this industry. So for me, like, I feel like that's pretty awesome. Like when I compare that to like being a doctor or a lawyer or something like that, it's like you can start your own practice, but that's going to take a whole lot of work, you know, and 
Um, and just like anything with IT, though, I mean, you, you'll find, I think, if you haven't already tried to create projects or to do anything where you're trying to sell your work, whether it's programming uh, or specific pro programming, I should say, um, you'll find that, like, the actual coding part is, like, half the battle. And really, it might even be, like, 35% of the battle, and the rest of it is, like, money and luck and uh, marketing. So customer support taxes, just you know, a lot of things that are involved in running a business that are a real pain in the butt. But yeah, I mean, I guess I'm sort of just blathering on. I didn't have any topic for this video at all. And um, I do still want to provide content when I feel like it. So I plan to do that. And um, there just isn't a whole lot to talk about in the IT world right now, except for uh, chat GPT and layoffs. All right, everybody, I hope you take care and have a good night. Bye.